In this tutorial, I will show you how to take a 2D vector graphic image and turn it into a 3D logo in Blender. And we're going to be doing this with a .svg file, which is a vector image. And if you don't already have a vector graphic image that you want to use, then a really great site to find free vector graphic images is Pixabay. So I'm going to be using this free wolf logo from Pixabay, and I'll have a link in the description if you'd also like to download this. But Pixabay also has a bunch of other really great free images that you could use, like this one here. We have a wolf one. We also have this parrot one, and there's also an eagle and some other images here like this dragon one so I'll have links in the description to these really great images that I found on Pixabay and if you'd like to search for more images you could also type in silhouette on Pixabay and then right up here you can choose vector graphics and there's quite a lot of different vector graphics that you could use and when you're downloading the image make sure you click here on vector graphic because that is a dot SVG file and then you can download it so let's now add the image into Blender. So I'm just going to select the cube and then also select the light and I will delete them. And then to add in the vector graphic, we're going to go to file and we're going to go down here to import. And then we can go down here to scalable vector graphic or a .svg. And so when you click on that, Blender's file browser will appear and then you can just select the image. So I'm going to click on the image and then click on import SVG. And then if I zoom way in, you can see here it is. Now Blender adds these objects as curve objects. So if I select the object and then press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see that these aren't using vertices. These are made out of curves. And so you can select the handles and you could edit the curves if you wanted to change the shape. And if you did want to change this to a normal mesh object, then what you could do is just select the object in object mode and you can click on object and you can go down here to convert. And right now it's a curve, but you could change it to mesh. And then if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see it is a mesh object. The topology isn't very good, but it is now made out of vertices and edges and faces. I'm not going to use that though, so I will delete that. I'm going to use the curve object. So what I'm going to do on top view is tab to go into edit mode. I will press the A key to select everything and I'll press G to grab and I'm just going to move this over here and then tab to go back to object mode. And that way the object's origin is in the center of the object. Now I want to make this look like a cool 3D logo, so I want to give it some thickness. So to give it thickness, we can go right over here to the object data properties. And then just open up the geometry tab right here. And there's an extrude value, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag the extrude value. And if you hold down the shift key, it's going to make your movements more sensitive. And I'm just going to drag that up like that, just to give it some thickness. So now it is actually a 3D logo. And then I also want to give it a bevel to make it look more like a real object. So on the bevel right here, I'm just going to leave this at round. And then I can turn up the depth. Now you definitely don't want to turn the depth up too much because if you turn it up too much you can see the object is kind of overlapping on itself. So I'm gonna turn the depth way down to like a 0 0.005 so it is a pretty small bevel. And then you could also change the resolution of the bevel so if you want to make it more detailed you could turn that up. Now if I press 7 on the numpad for top view and kind of zoom in here you can see there sometimes are still problems and this is because the mesh is still kind of overlapping itself and so there's an issue there. So a really easy way to fix this is to tab to go into edit mode and you can just select the handles and you can rotate the handles or you can scale them or move them around and you just need to make that angle less sharp because this is a super sharp angle and so it's overlapping and so that bevel is causing problems. So if you don't mind slightly changing the shape of your logo, you can kind of rotate this back. You could also select another handle nearby and select the end of the handle and kind of move it back until that angle is less sharp and that looks much better. So you can just go around your object and make sure there aren't any issues and everything looks fine. So then to make this look like a cool 3D logo, I could rotate this on the x-axis and I'll type in 90 and enter just so that it's rotated sideways. And then I still have the camera in the scene. So what I'm going to do is kind of move my view right here and then I will press Control alt numpad 0. That's going to bring the camera to where I am. And I can also select the camera and press G to grab and kind of move the camera around. And also right up here on the output properties, I'm going to set the resolution x and y to the same value and that way it'll be a square image and then i want to give this object like a shiny metal material but to make the metal look realistic and to have some cool reflections i'm going to add in an hdri so if i go here to the world properties if you go here to surface on the color you can click on the yellow dot and then here under texture you can choose
choose environment texture and then you can click on open and open up an HDRI. And I'm going to be adding in this Photo Studio Broadway Hall. This is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download it. So I'm going to select that HDRI that I've downloaded from Polyhaven and click on open image. So then I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view to see how that's looking. And also if you go right up here to the render properties on the color management, I'm going to set the look here to very high contrast so the colors are more saturated. And also if I open up the film tab, I could turn this to transparent and that way I can't see the HDRI in the background. So then if I select the object here, I could give it a material right over here on the material properties. So I'm just going to add a very simple metal material. So I'll click on new here and I could just make the base color like slightly darker. And also I could turn the metallic value to one so it is metal. And then I could also turn the roughness down so it is very shiny. Maybe turn the base color down a bit. I could also press shift A and I could go here to light and I could add like an area light that I can kind of rotate the area light to the side and also maybe make the area light stronger and I could also change the color so maybe make it like a slight blue color and I could kind of duplicate some of these lights and move them around to give some cool reflections. So now I could create a cool animation of this logo. I could maybe have it rotating around and you can see it's going to reflect all the light coming from the HDRI. So that is how you create a 3D logo from a vector graphic image in blender so i hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching and if you'd like to help support this channel i will have links in the description to my gumroad and my patreon and the youtube memberships but i hope this helps and thank you for watching